what happened with the pilot? So, okay, so when we shot the sizzle, Lisa was just basically like, she called a staff meeting and we're like, what is this about? We didn't know what it was about. We thought it was just going to be about the lounge because the lounge hadn't opened yet. She had just done the second season of um, Rojas's Beverly Hills. And so she called this meeting and then basically pulls the, the switch, the bait and switch. And she's like, actually, we, we are going to shoot a little show here, pilot, whatever you want to call it, with all of you or whoever wants to be on it. And at that point, me and Stassi and Chris and I looked at each other. We're like, oh, OK. And then, yeah, we all sat down kind of individually and chat, chatted with Lisa and Guillermo and Natalie. And they were asking us, like, so who do you like? Who do you hate? Who have you hooked up with? Who, you know, just all those like, kind of questions about everybody else that we worked with. Did Lisa have an idea that there was all this stuff happening? No. No, <laughs> no one did. I mean, even Guillermo, who, like, he might have had some kind of idea, but I don't think they knew the extent of it. So we shot that that fall of 2000, maybe it was 2011. Actually, no, it was 2011, I lied. So it wasn't 2010, it was 2011. We shot at the end of that. And then 2012, that summer, we shot the first season. And then it premiered in 2013. And it got picked up and was everybody just pumped about it? Uh, we didn't know what to expect. I mean, we were excited. We we're like, yeah, this is going to be fun. But we, I think we just were kind of like, you know what, like we only get one chance to make a really good show. So I think we just need to like fully commit and just be totally just open and give, you know, leave it all on the floor because we don't know if like, if it's going to be successful, if we get another season. So we may as well just try to make the best show possible. I think that's what's so cool about Vanderpump is you guys do do that. Like there's nothing hidden behind the doors. Like yeah. you guys open everything. We don't really have to try. We just, we were like, let's just try not to like, try not to act or be any way let's just do like we already prior to that had everything that you saw plus more all the drama all the heart all the tears all the fighting all the fun so we're like let's just do what we've been doing in front of cameras at what point did you realize it was going to stick around N at no point still even now even now really I, yeah there's no job security with reality tv Honestly, every like, I don't know. I don't think at any point I really. I mean, no, I think there. I don't know what season, but I think I think for the, at least the first three or four years, I was like, I really hope they bring me back as a member on the cast. <laughs> as a yeah, as a cast member, because you could come back and not be prominent, prominent, or they could demote you, or they could cut you back in terms of pay. You know, and and when you it's really demanding in terms of your schedule and your time and when you're broke and, and having to supplement income in every, every which way you possibly can think of but still want to participate with all your friends on a show it can be really scary so this is the first season now where you're single on the show I mean yeah technically last season I was but I mean when you're going through the first initial stage of divorce and breaking up with somebody you're, you're still attached to that person in that relationship it was it wasn't an easy process even though I was technically single this is the first season I think I've been fully like embracing that life and what does that mean for the new season <laughs> coming up it means you're gonna see very different side of me and you're and and I think, well, in general, just aside from the show, but just in the stage in my life, I think I was much more open to dating and really, truly meeting someone and being available to actually, like, have feelings for someone and really wanting to date someone. I think that first year I was kind of like, I'm down to have fun and put myself out there to, like, just being with another person, you know, in, in some kind of capacity, but not really, I didn't want anything from anybody. I was like, do not catch feelings from me because I don't have those to give back to you. But this year I was just like, you know what? I think I could, I think I could have feelings for someone. And I, and I caught feelings a few times for sure. Are you on the dating apps? No. Can you be? I could if I wanted. I, okay. I, it's kind of a lie. <laughs> I did hinge when I went to Europe uh, last like springtime. I was like, you know what? 
I feel like I, I I'm I'm willing to like put myself out there on this thing because it's like another country. I'm not gonna like find or get matched with anybody I know. And I just thought it'd be like a fun thing to try out. But I don't know. I just any successes. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It was fun. I don't know. Um, but here, I don't know. Yeah, what is dating like in L.A. now? Ugh, terrible. Last time I was single, the dating apps didn't exist. It was not a thing. You just met people the old-fashioned way, like just out in the, the wild. I prefer, like, <laughs> I prefer, I like to meet people, yeah, just in real life or through friends or referrals, <laughs> recommendations, that kind of thing, because I don't know. I just feel like the, what I hear from everybody, what I've been hearing from my friends throughout the years is just that it's just really daunting on the apps. So why put myself through that? It's a lot. I don't know. I, I just think if you meet somebody in real life, you're going to know right away if you have a connection. And I think that just kind of like cuts out all that like time spent trying to talk to somebody. Not that that doesn't happen anyway, because I, I, I do meet people through like Instagram, through the DMs. You know? And then what does a date with you look like? Are you going out <laughs> to dinner? Is it drinks? Um, depends on the person. I mean, I've done, I've got, I mean, I've done all, of, all the dates, you know, I've, I've had dinner, I've had drinks, I've had coffee, I've had, you know, I, like all the standard whatever kind of dates there hasn't been a lot of second dates. i mean that's what my single friends say around mm. here because i never really had a date in la so i feel like at least from a girl's perspective it's so much harder uh, i do you know what the problem is too i keep meeting people that don't live in la oh like they might be here but they they're like la's not their like their home right and i'm fine with that like i don't i don't necessarily need to meet someone that like i, I don't mind doing like a long distance thing but it's getting you know someone that's down to commit to that process of it all what's it like when you tell them that you're on a reality show <laughs> either they they know because the referral the ref yeah a friend kind of like gives them a <laughs> heads up and lets them know or it's like if i meet them through like instagram it's the, the information's kind of there a little bit. Yeah. You and DM people? I have. Whoa. I know. It's fun. <laughs> Why not? I don't yeah. know. What's the worst that's going to happen? They never open it. Or they just don't reply. Or Were there any long shots with anybody? Like Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Um, no, but there, I. You should reach for the stars. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth. Isn't he married, though? Yeah. I, um, I would never anyone that's married. No. And that's the one thing that you have to do is you really have to kind of sometimes comb through to try to find a sign of like a girlfriend or a wife because I would never want to like slide in if there is somebody, you know, ugh, that'd right. be treacherous but um <laughs> but yeah i mean there's definitely been a couple and i did get replies but not it didn't really go anywhere right it was just like hi how you doing and then that's it is there anything else in the new season that you're dreading for it to come out mm. the reality tv like you live this headache and now it's gonna surface again i used to feel that way but there's no sense in dread i don't know and sometimes I worry about the wrong thing. Like, I'm like, oh, my God, that's going to be scary. And then it comes out and it's received really, really well. And so I think it's better just to live in the truth and just own it. You know, I think like when I in the past, when I talked about like abortion and things like that, like I was a little, ner little nervous about that because it's something that can be. You just don't know how people are going to react or respond to it because it's, you know, it's a bit of a heavier subject but it was received so wonderful I think I got people were really kind and reached out and like it was it was actually a really nice thing but this season I don't know I mean again you're just gonna see a very different side of me and I think I think there might be some things that <laughs> people wouldn't miss that they uh like again I'm kind of just like doing my thing and very unapologetic about it because I'm just like you know what Fuck it. <laughs> Do you have like a new go, like, fuck it attitude? Of course. 
I, I think... Because this is your time to shine. Yeah, I mean, literally, I just want to do, m- m- like, my thing. And I don't, like, I, I don't really want to apologize for wanting to live my best life. And I think who knows how long this stage in my life is going to last. So why not have fun and say yes to things and just do what feels good for myself and that at that moment and the time. And, um, I'm not, I don't want to like hurt anyone. I don't want to offend anyone, but, and I'm trying to make the choices accordingly. But at the end of the day, like, sorry, not sorry. (laughs) How does that work? If something really cool happens, you're like, Oh, this would be great on camera. Do you call the producer and they're like, okay, we got to film this. If there's something that I really want to do that I think would be really great for the show, you know, the season. I mean, we, we often, we talk about like, Hey, like, what sort of plans do you have coming up or just is there anything that you think would be really great that you want to do like with any of your friends like we'll talk about those kind of things to see if we can work it into the season or something so we have those kind of talks just uh, ahead of time or if there is something that comes up that it's like hey like there's this thing happening in a couple of weeks that like I would really like to do can we work can we maybe film it or something so of course because it's something if it's something I would already be doing why not try to film it you know um but I mean, I don't try to like manufacture like straight up stories or manipulate other people or well, that not kind of that, thing. but like let's say you like a new mini golf place opened up and you oh. wanted to go do that and like oh for sure. So because even when you guys go to restaurants, like the camera crew's there and then it catches you guys pulling up. Like, how much notice is there before like these things happen? Oh, they have to get notice because they have to get permits, oh. and those can take. I mean, they can sometimes get permits, and those things. Um, relatively quickly but other depending on where in the city it is i think it can take a little longer i don't know those logistics i'm not the one that has to usually go through that process but there definitely needs to be a little bit of time i think yeah. with last season the scandal mm-hmm. that blew up mm-hmm. everywhere mm-hmm. were you surprised at how big it blew up of course yeah i mean and when once i kind of like started processing it because of course we were all rocked by it you know, even though I had suspicions, once it's like confirmed and then details start coming out, it is just so upsetting and just kind of hard to process, you know? So, but the more attention it got, it just was like, in every single day, I mean, it just there was something else and something else, and it was being broadcast somewhere else or picked up somewhere else, and you're just like, this is crazy. It just like we kept going and going, and I just, but but I think you know, being inside of it, it was hard to kind of sometimes step outside and try to like see it from other angles, what even though I could. That? Well, I mean, like I could take an objective viewpoint of it and um, kind of try to see it from the way that other people would look at it and it was a very interesting kind of like the voyeur like voyeuristic um, aspect of it and why people were so intrigued by it all even though I was more in it I don't know does that make sense yeah yeah was the group chat amongst you guys just like look where it just blew up here like this is nuts like all eyes on us right now this is crazy I don't um, I don't know that there's necessarily like a group chat. There was se- there were several chats happening for sure. Uh huh. Yeah. I remember hearing about it because my friends were like obsessed, and they mm-hmm. thought this was crazy. And they were explaining like everything, and and then before you know it, Tom was on Special Forces, and I was excited for oh, that show. And I found yeah. out he started fighting Nick Vial, and all this stuff happening. Yeah, I yeah, uh, uh, I remember when. I found out Nick was going to do that. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Because I had been talking about everything, like, with him for months. With you know? Nick Vial? hmm About doing a podcast? No. Or- I mean, a little bit. Because, you know, I he just as a friend, I was asking advice about podcasts and what, you know, I should do and where I should go with it all. Um, but I had become, you know, friends with him and his fiance Natalie. And so we were just like go grab drinks you know and that was in the midst of all this stuff happening so I just was like kind of I would just be talking life stuff about (laughs) and everything and then when I found out that he was going 
to be doing special forces, I was like, wow. Wow. And I, he did it. I'm like, I want to be just like in his pocket, just <laughs> witnessing just what's going on. Did you watch the whole show? No. Oh, okay. There's a crazy bee scene, bee scene where he gets stung. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I definitely tried, but I mean, it just, sometimes too much TV happens and I just can't. Do you have, with that, do you ever watch back Vanderpump? I, I do. I mean, I, I don't want to say like we have to, but like we, sh- we should be. We definitely. Like what made the cut? Yeah. I, I like to know because I don't film with everybody. And so it's I. It's like a recap. Yeah. I need to know like what's being said and what, you know, like what I filmed actually makes it into. We film hours, hours and days and we film for nine weeks. And so I, you know, I, as much as I can think back and remember what was going on during that time, I still don't know like what actually is going to like make it into the show. And so when we're doing stuff like the reunion or if I'm going to do like Watch Robins Live or if I'm going to do any kind of press and I'm being asked questions about what I thought, you know, about this particular scene or what something said, someone said, I don't want to look like a dummy. Like I, I need to like have an informed opinion. So yeah, I like to watch it back. What was your whole background? You were working at a record label prior? No, I was. So I was working at Sir. I mean, my background's always been in service, um, industry, restaurant after restaurant after restaurant. Um, what was the best one you ever worked at? I mean, Sir's definitely been my favorite. I met some of my best friends there, and it just really like was a fun ass place to work. I worked at so many places where it was like either very corporate or just a lot of like rules or like the uniform sucked or it was just wasn't I don't know it wasn't fun but like sir was just really like a cool ass place to work did Lisa Vanderpump make that environment I mean it was definitely a combination of you know Natalie and Guillermo really like have that cool like European South American Argentine like sort of vibe to them that they definitely wanted to like bring into that restaurant and then when they partnered with like Lisa it just like elevated it as well so you were doing the servicing <laughs> And then, um, and I was also like acting and doing that stuff on the side, but then I was kind of like, you know what, I want to really kind of switch gears. So I was like, I've always really been curious about the, you know, business side of music industry, not an artist myself. So I was like, I want to get an internship at a record label, uh, see what that's about, see where I could fit into that world. So I took- Were you living in LA at that time? Yeah. Yeah. I moved to LA in 2006. Okay. So I've been here forever, but, um, so 2011 yeah I got an internship at Warner Brother Records and I was doing that first whole summer and working at Sir and I loved it so after my internship was wrapping up I was like well I because I was in the A&R departments and also then would sub in in their publishing departments and I was like that's really kind of cool like publishing and licensing like getting music placed in television or commercials or you know even like music supervision would have been really cool as well so after that was done I was like I should try to get work at like a publishing house so when I was actively pursuing looking for work there that's when the show opportunity presented itself if you the show wasn't happening now do you think you'd go back to that probably yeah it'd be Mm -hmm. so cool yeah, no, I mean, that's like definitely the only other area of interest that I have that I could really see myself working and enjoying life. And then what other bands do you like? <laughs> <laughs> um, What bands like don't I like? I mean, definitely my biggest area of music and interest in genre, genre wise is the rock, alternative, hard rock, m- metal. <laughs> metal? <laughs> yeah. New metal. Like who? What well, okay, my newest favorite band uh, this past year has been Sleep Token. Oh, I don't even know them. <sighs> They're so good. Sleep Token? Mm-hmm. Do you like Neck Deep? Yeah. Okay, Waterparks? Well, yes. Busted? That's like a deep cut. Oh, yeah, yeah. You oh, know them? Like, yeah. From the UK? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Blink? Oh, yeah. Obviously. Um, this is probably one of my favorites. Oh, Coheed. Did From, you go to Warped Tour? Of course. <laughs> Did I go to Warped Tour? I got gum stuck on my head watching, or some girls uh, put gum in my ponytail when I was watching Coheed because, I don't know, I was like standing in front of her. Did you mosh with her? 
knock her out? No, I was just like standing there watching it. And I was just like, re- like went like this to my ponytail and just put gum in it. But yeah, Coheed. I mean, who the f- like? Um, obviously, like my Kim was a big one. Do you still work at the restaurant now? No. What do you do? I haven't worked there for a number of years. What do you do in your free time? Oh, um, listen to music, go to shows. <laughs> you know. Are you at a concert like um, every week? No, I mean, th- there was like a period of time because everyone went on tour. Everyone was on tour at the same time this past pretty much spring through fall. And so I was trying to like go to shows as often as I could, but I was filming a lot of the from july to like september so i was trying to catch everybody when i could <laughs> when you should I film think. at a show oh uh, mm, if they would let i don't know no they probably wouldn't i know um <laughs> so yeah there was one time where i went to like three shows in a weekend it was pretty intense i Who went to it? like i went to census fail coheed and then i went to like sleep token oh i did an interview um, with census fail like 15 years ago <gasps> with buddy <laughs> i love buddy i just saw him last week but is there anything that you n- don't want to show on the show? Or do you feel like, since you've already opened yourself up so much? I know, because there's times where I'm just like, it would be like nice to have a little tiny nugget that's just for me. Do but you have nuggets? I... I have friendships that are not on the show. So, like, there's, like, those relationships that I, that are, you know... I don't, they're not that, that, it's not that they're private, but yeah, I, I have various friendships or relationships that are not necessarily on the show. So you don't see every person I know. So that's nice to have those kind of things, I guess, that are separate. But I don't know. I've been pretty open about a lot of areas of my life, a lot of intimate areas of my life, especially in my last relationship. And that's kind of scary. So do you think you'd ever do that again? I don't know. I, I don't I don't think I'm going to probably have that type of um, a definitely a, a more un, unique situation that Tom was so much of a prevalent person on the show. He was like a, a main cast member. So he had as much of a responsibility or obligation to be as open as I was. So therefore, our relationship became much more of an open thing to be discussed and picked apart and (laughs) judged by every person else on the show so when you know I don't I don't know that if I met somebody tomorrow and even if they did film a little bit that they would be that in that same position or or that I really want that not that I I want to because it can be frustrating when someone has you know a significant other that they bring around or you know, but they don't want to talk about it or they want to keep private. And I'm over here, like, just getting blasted, you know, and I'm like, oh, how nice to have your private life. And you get to come here and talk about my relationship and what I have going on, but you get to keep yours separate. You know, that could be a frustrating thing. But, you know, I just, if that person, they don't, you know, they didn't necessarily sign up for it, but sometimes dating someone on a reality show, you, you, it was like the perfect formula to have that. I don't know. Just because you were both there from the start. And yeah. Then... Yeah. But we, I mean, we didn't know. The show could have gone on for two, three seasons. Do you ever watch mm-hmm. back key moments from there? I mean, not on purpose. Like it just stumbles upon TikTok? Um, yeah, sometimes there'll be stuff on social media that gets reposted or sometimes there'll be like an episode that's on this that's replaying on on TV and I'll like turn it on. I'll be like, what season is this? And there'll be stuff I totally forgot about uh, and I'll watch it and I'm just like, this is so funny or this is traumatizing. I don't know. Like, you know, it's just it's wild to have this like highlight reel of your life. And you're just a, so you're just a different person. I was talking about it with Dana, who hosts my podcast with me. And it's just like I've had like many software updates since then. And you just watch it and you're just like, this is immortalized. Like this part of my life, this person I was is like just lives (laughs) on TV. You know, so people turn it on and 
they don't maybe don't realize or unless they really do the research that this was eight years ago, nine years ago, seven years ago. It's not really me today. And then on top of that, if people just stop watching and they just see you from season five, mm -hmm. is that weird when people come up to you and only know you for like a certain moment from seasons ago? I don't know because I don't. They don't always specify, like, hey, I haven't I haven't watched you since 2015. <laughs> right. You know? But I mean, I guess it would be. I mean, I I would hope that people would be practicing some discernment or you know be able to like because people who come up to me they'll know me from like errors of videos that i did from like years ago right and it's like oh that was like so long ago yeah. so does that happen with reality tv where people know you from those kind of moments for sure yeah like i, I love that proposal the wedding was beautiful yeah i think there's definitely like standout stuff for them or they'll ask about certain things or they'll be like oh your blonde hair and i'm like that was 2013 <laughs> you dyed like, that it was, that was like a de that was over a decade ago like <laughs> i mean just imagine the stuff you were doing over 10 years ago and if somebody was bringing it up to you today just anybody <laughs> you're like i mean but it's it's it was moments for them that stood out for them they were like big you know to, I don't know. It's just I can't blame them because it was entertainment. It was it was fun for them. It was stuff that stuck with them. So like, why not bring it up? I guess. But for me, it's just like I've lived so much more life than what they witnessed on the show that it's it's more weird for me, I guess. But it's fun for them. So. <laughs> what made you want to do a sandwich shop? Um. And when's it opening? Oh my god. That is a million dollar question. So the <laughs> sandwich shop um, was something that, you know, Tom and I had talked about. <clears throat> but honestly, because I'd, I've spent majority of my life, and especially adult life, working in service industry, I'm like, why not do something that I already know? Like, it's like my life experience, essentially. Um, but do it on like a smaller scale, like not do a full ass restaurant or bar or anything like that. And I just like the kind of quaintness of it. I like, I love like the Nancy Myers movies where, you know, they have like the bookshop or their bakery or their cafe or the, you know, coffee shop. It's giving, you know, main character energy vibes, like lead fe female, you know, meets the guy <laughs> coming in off the street and they fall in love those are the vibes so um but I just like thought it would just be like something really lovely to like give myself something to like work on and do and have purpose and I was feeling like very lost and directionless honestly I, like and I, and I think sometimes we all feel that way and some, sometimes you're just like what do I want to do next I, I'm someone that likes to kind of pivot when I feel like something isn't really bringing me joy and this made me really excited and I really wanted to pursue it. And so now, um, I mean, people had always said like opening any kind of restaurant, any kind of food service establishment is the most difficult thing you can do. And they are not wrong, especially in West Hollywood, because West Hollywood is its own universe. They play by their own rules. Where are you opening it? It's on Robertson, right by Sir. Oh, cool. Like literally three doors up um my and, friend opened up do you know dobrik's the pizza place on sunset oh on, i've driven by that next to saddle yeah, yeah 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 yeah. so the guy who opened it used to be on the podcast with me but he would always explain about how west hollywood would take forever with the permits and getting people out and getting approvals and if you want to change one thing mm -hmm. then it costs so much money to try and change yeah so and because they're doing they're going to be doing in this next, I don't know, supposedly this year, we'll see. Um, they're going to be kind of rezoning or not rezoning. They're doing something to the sidewalks. They're, they want to make it more pedestrian-like or pedestrian-friendly or walking street. I'm not entirely sure. They don't They don't really give us too much information. Um, there was a patio, like a build-out patio off the property and that's that was a lot of the appeal of the place and so they're like you're gonna need to remove it they they took it away well we went back and forth with them for a really long time because uh. we're like well can we just keep it and then when 
that time comes like 60 days out we'll take it out and we went back and forth for literally months and eventually just came down to the fact of like it's got to go and so it wasn't like we couldn't even have any kind of health inspection until that was decided and so then once we started our inspections that kicked off a whole set of just repairs and fixing this and fixing that and then every time they come out then it's like another two months of like before they get back again how long how often are you there um i mean i'm there like because like, I'll, I'll meet up with we have somebody that's like kind of our manager uh, per, that's uh, that is facilitating a lot of the the site manager yeah that's that's working with the contractor that's in touch with the the fire department and the health department and doing all those things um so I'll go there and like meet with him and just just talk about everything that's happening. Like, so it's not it's not just the two of us. Obviously, like we we need people that are helping us. Do you uh, have the menu the already made? Yeah, yeah. Like we're we're ve like we're essentially like ready once we have all of our permits. So right now it's just we're waiting to get the actual physical copies of all of the permits that we needed in order to give to the health department, and then we can get that from them. So it's it's a it is just it is a constant state of limbo of waiting on someone else it's like red tape then waiting for this person and then waiting for this person and waiting for that and then yeah did you watch the bear i haven't watched the second season but i did yeah second season so good i know I, but i'm just behind i know <laughs> you gotta catch up yeah i know what but, else do you watch um what have i watched do you watch saltburn yeah what'd you think i loved it I love it was such a corny ass movie. I loved it. You watched the new Hunger Games? No. That was a really good. One. Was it? Yeah. I didn't even know that there was new Hunger Games. People were talking about it. I'm like, are we talking about like? But the thing is, if it doesn't have Liam and I didn't like him in it. Jennifer Lawrence in you know there's I just I don't like when they like do a, like a reboot or like a <laughs> like a like a sequel decades later not decades, it's decades, a later. prequel you know oh, it was a prequel well that's how they're they're like it's not a sequel it's a prequel so we don't need anybody else because this is before them it's like no so what else do you watch um pretty much everything that comes out on netflix what did i recently oh i watched oh that was okay i don't even need to talk about that but <laughs> what have I recently watched? Um, stuff on Bravo. I watched like Salt Lake Housewives. I'm watching some Southern Charm. <laughs> Who's your favorite character on there? On which one? Either. Um, this season on Salt Lake was, it kind of like varied week to week. Like everyone was having like, that's, I kind of like it when it does that though. Do you try and pick it apart? No, well, not too. I don't know. I'm, I can't. Wa I have. I watch these shows very differently than other people watch them. Why? Because I do reality TV. Right. So are you like constantly like, oh, this they did that on purpose? Like they set that shot up? No, because I I'm like I'm looking at it from like their perspectives, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, I'm like, I have a feeling they're probably. I'm like, we haven't really heard their side very much, and I have a feeling that was probably like. We're probably not getting their side because they're getting. I feel like they're kind of getting the villain out of it right now, you know. Like we're all, we're only hearing like them attack. I don't know. Are you fun to watch it with? Or are you picking that apart? No, I don't. I don't. I just. I'm. I'm just thinking it. This is all internal. Okay. And but I'm also like friends with several of the people on Salt Lake, so I can't pick a favorite. But like, I felt like week to week there was a lot. Of, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> how was BravoCon? <laughs> that was crazy. It was really it was nuts because they did it in Vegas this year, so I felt like it was even bigger. But I feel like Vegas is like <laughs> much more equipped to handle that kind of crowd. Like in New York, it felt like it was like a little bit stuffier. Yeah, and I just feel like as far as the crowds and kind of maneuvering and getting around, like it felt like very like what is the word i'm trying to think of i, I feel like in vegas it was just like much more open and like the like it just was big like it was more spaced out i don't know how to describe did you network with anybody network meet anybody you wanted to <laughs> <laughs> um i met some of like the housewives from dubai for the first time are they crazy rich 
I just think they're like so like fabulous. I don't know. And then the women from Married to Medicine and and then it's just nice to see people that you just don't normally ever see. Because, I mean, as much as I, I'm friendly with the Southern Charm people or the obviously the Summer House kids, and I'll see them like when I go to New York or when they come to L.A., um, there's other people that I never, ever really get to see that I, I might have met at one point. I'm trying to – there's so many people in Bravo, but like <laughs> um, – um, but it's just nice to like get in the room with everybody or that I have like reached out because they watch the show and then I get to like meet them for the first time. I don't know. Did you get mobbed? Swarmed? Yeah. Yeah. Did you like that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because I just I feel like it's hard to like really take time to say hello to people and be very intentional with your hellos and pictures and everything like that because then it's just one person and then the next person and the next person you'd like I don't even know where to focus like my eyes and then they, you have security and they're kind of just like trying to like move you along and it's just it feels like it's just not a natural way to say hello or I don't I, it's just that that was a newer thing this year let's put it that way right is it weird doing a panel in front of a live audience I mean, well, we've done them in the past. For the recaps, for, right? So we, every year we've done a panel at BravoCon. So, but this one was probably the biggest. I think there was probably at least 8,000 people in the room. That's a lot. There's a lot of people. <laughs> Do you get nervous in front of that? Um, Not really, because it's, it's almost like with the point where it's like it's so many like people. It's just like, no. It's just like a C. You're not locking eyes with people. No. I, d I don't know. At this point, I don't know. What's your relationship with Andy Cohen? I love Andy. He's, I, th I think he's just great. I think he's a really cool guy. Yeah. I mean, I don't have like a, we're not like tight, you know. But, as, I mean, at this point, it's been so many years, I feel like. Does he ever call you like, Katie? I was nuts. <laughs> no. No. But he was really great. Like, he, when we were looking to hire some people for the sandwich shop, he reached out and recommended somebody that he knew. And he's like, he's, he's a very like supportive person. Like he, he like really roots for everybody. It's really nice. What's going to be your role at the sandwich shop when it opens? I'm going to eat. <laughs> Food taste tester. <laughs> yeah. Sampler. Um, yeah. No, I mean, um, I want to, first of all, I want to like learn how to make all the sandwiches because obviously um but yeah no I mean I want to just like be in there I want to be in my like little shop and I want to be behind the counter and like this is yeah I don't know do you have the outfits already designed um I don't think that we're necessarily doing uh that I think what well, we have like our something about her like merch they'll probably just be like a something about her t-shirt and like jean you know yeah. it's casual and how'd you come up with the name um we wanted we didn't want anything punny or with this or any kind of sandwich or food name in there we wanted it to like have something to do with like we wanted it to sound like a, a movie title you know we wanted it to have that sort of like element to it but also be able to work into other types of like branding as well did you watch anyone but you anyone but you the Cindy sweeney movie glenn powell oh i forgot about that rom-com I haven't seen that one. It was yet. really good. <laughs> <laughs> like I haven't watched anything. Um, I haven't watched that. No. Oh, I is it good? Read. Yeah. Oh, was it really? It was like a two thousands rom com. It remind, reminded me of the olden days. What? Okay, really? Yeah. I haven't heard that. I've heard people go meh. I don't understand why. I don't know. I watched Night Swim recently. I didn't. Wasn't that a horror? Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Was it good? No. Oh, okay. It was. It was very okay. The ending sucked. Yeah. Put it that way. So what do you do now? Like, what's your day-to-day -day now? Day-to-day -day now? I mean, it depends on the day. It depends on the week. This I don't have, like, a, my schedule is so inconsistent, which is frustrating. I can't have a whole lot of routine. I don't know. Because, like, right now we're still um, doing a little bit of posts on the show. And then... Like, post... 
like we have our like talking head stuff that we do because they ha- they until they're like cutting together episodes they don't we're not going to talk about like every single thing that we filmed mm-hmm. obviously um <laughs> so that's what we're working on now and then the show premieres on the 30th january 30th so bravo that <laughs> brings <laughs> january 30th <laughs> on bravo um and then that obviously introduces some more stuff into the schedule and so and then right now it's just been like dealing with sandwich stuff stop sometimes there's a lot to do sometimes it's like waiting okay we got stuff going on this week and then there's like a week of like okay well we just gotta wait to hear back from this person and so other than that i'm just trying to like it's like the calm before the storm right now yeah what happens on season premiere day you don't know it's unpredictable you don't know what's gonna <laughs> come your way you know, are you so. gonna be watching it with anybody on on the premiere yeah um i don't know maybe a couple friends i'll have come over and drink wine and celebrate but yeah it's crazy it's 10 seasons and you were up for an no this is the 11th season 11 seasons yeah what awards have you won we were nominated for two emmys that's crazy i know we lost to who? Um, Let's call him out. <laughs> what is the what the uh, the show that Ryan Reynolds? The soccer one, yeah, Wrexham. Wrexham. They won all of the awards. Oh, <laughs> I haven't seen it. Neither have I. But we were like, "What's it? What's happening here?" They they won like all of them. Um, so that's who we lost to. I think we lost to them in both categories, um, which was a bummer, and. We're nominated for two People's Choice Awards. We're not nominated for the show of the year and reality TV show. We're like the show of the year, we're up against like The Bear and like SNL. I'm like, yeah, we're we're definitely gonna win that one. <laughs> I think there's a chance. Are you liking doing your podcast now? What's that? Are you liking your podcast? Yeah. So yeah, now now we have the podcast, and we I mean that's just like we record one day a week that you know, but then we'll like get together and like plan that. Uh, how do you approach it do you have like notes yeah we, i mean we've we've got together before and like compiled lists of topics and ideas and then we'll get together the day before and come up with stuff so the uh, our approach with that is so much fun because we wanted it to feel like you know it's a it's a podcast where you're just hanging out with your friends, you know, like it's a, it's a girl chat, but you know, guys are welcome too. guys should be listening because it's a lot of like female perspective on, Oh, I listened <laughs> relationship, sex, all the things. So I know. am confused about, um, <laughs> the sugar daddy scam where they want to send you seven grand. The, Oh, Oh, on TikTok. Yeah. I, I am. Don't know what that's about. Like all my DMS. I, it's just, I can scroll for, my until my wrist gets tired of of men just being like hey sweetheart like how you doing just do you do you need a sugar daddy it's not like real but again like why wh- what why is not go- pursue it mm, <laughs> mm. but again like why is there so many accounts just in all all the girls dms trying to pose as sugar daddies i don't know it's the weirdest thing ever but like who, what if one of them is real i don't know We'll never find out. <laughs> or maybe we will. What yeah. about hickeys? Are they in? I think hickeys are totally in. I think like they're so fun. Are you wearing a turtleneck for a reason? No, I don't have. <laughs> I don't have any hickeys. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't been making out with anybody lately. It's really, you know, it's been a little. It's been pretty. Pretty boring. Have you? When was first. your last date? My last date. Like what month is it? Uh, it's been a couple of months. Were you the one pursuing it? Probably no. <laughs> what do you look for now? My in terms of like physicality, it doesn't like it. It varies. An ogre. No, no, it varies. Shrek. No, <laughs> no. I mean, first of all, I'm not like I don't care about like height. Like truly, as long as they're not weird about it, I don't really care. Um, and I don't really care like. I'm attracted to so much different, like, like, I'm always surprised about, like, what, like, if I could show you, like, a lineup of, like, of people that I've been attracted to, and they're, like, 
you're like, wow, they're all different. But sometimes, like, there's, like, a through line. Um, but I like, I don't know, I like people that are ambitious and creative and motivated and funny and good and honest. And I want someone that's just, like, maybe possibly been through some things. They don't need to be divorced. But, like, someone who's, like, in a really inex- inexperienced in life, I probably will, I don't, I don't want to have to be, like, raising anybody or showing them things you know I've I just I want someone to challenge me a little bit that would be ideal what if they have kids it would truly depend on the situation do you know what I mean um I'm not like a opposed to that but it's like what is their relationship like with their ex and what's a red flag that's a deal breaker for you (laughs) (laughs) um (laughs) When somebody's never left the country, when somebody um, has like really bad taste in music. I love that you love the alt rock. No, when somebody's like, when they're like, playlist is like only like Drake. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just not like, I, I like, there's some, I, there's a lot of rap music I like, but like, that's one I'm just like, if you tell me that's your f- favorite artist. I'm not, no, we're not going to, we're not going to get along. Do you like Pierce the Veil? Yes. I, I prevail? Love. Yes. Stay champs? I'm not as familiar, but like, I don't not like. Nothing but thieves. Like not like at the top, but yeah. Taking yeah. back Sunday? Of course. Obviously. Simple plan? Of course. Limp Biscuit? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Corn, I love. Oh, wow. Slipknot. Yep. Oh, wow. You're hardcore. (laughs) Linkin Park? Yeah. Avenged? Yeah. Gym Class Heroes? Yeah. Finch? Yes. Under Oath? Yes. (laughs) AFI? Yes. Thrice? Yes. Um, Those drive-thru records? Yeah. Artists? Brand new? Yep. Circus Survive? Never got into them. Okay. Um, Rise Against? Never got into them. Hmm. Something corporate. Yeah. Acceptance. Never got into that. I there's like two. You songs. give me acceptance vibes. No, no. Really? No, no. Okay. We the Kings. Yeah. Except Escape the Fate. Yeah. Bloodhound Gang. Bloodhound Gang. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> of course. But like what the heck? They had some really good, really funny songs. Okay. Um I know yeah, I remember. Dance. Da, 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 doing like a wait. Do it like a turbo jet. <laughs> <laughs> January 30th, new season. Mm-hmm. Are you excited? I'm really excited. I always get really excited for a new season because, you know, I, I mostly because other people are really excited. You know, especially, I mean, I'm a little nervous because coming off of the height of where we left everything off with Scannival and just people have been a bit ravenous for, for more. <laughs> You know, I just, you don't want to let people down. You don't want to to disappoint or anything like that. And I don't think they will, but I think it's always important to bear in mind that, you know, this is sort of still aftermath of everything. It was still processing really complicated things that were happening and not much life had been lived post everything that happened. So, I mean. Do you think it brought in a brand new audience? I think so, yeah. Oh, for sure. There's people that had no idea it was what Vanderpump Rules even was. They were they Bravo had like literally posted like watch these episodes. Like they picked episodes from past seasons just so people could do like a fast catch up to bring them up to a speed, just so they kind of had some I- idea of who people were and <laughs> and what everything was, so they could uh, fast track their way to to knowing what was going on. Um, but yeah, I think we definitely garnered a whole new audience and new fans of the show, so that's very cool. But I think I don't know, I think I think it's a really good season. I mean I had I definitely had fun. I think this is the first year that I I wasn't I don't know, having the worst time ever. <laughs> I feel like every year I, like every year, like it's like it's, it hasn't been the best time, but you know, I think a lot of that had to do with my 
past relationship, but I'm not in that anymore. I mean, I did have drama, of course, you know, unfortunately, but um, but mostly I had a lot of fun too. What's your living situation now? I live alone. Do you like it? <laughs> I love living alone. Have you ever? I have not lived alone since I was 22. I know. I've had well, roommates. you're 25 now. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, no, I, I had roommates and then I lived with Tom. When I think I moved in with him when I was 26. So this is the first time in over 10 years that I've lived. Is it an adjustment? I thought it would be. I thought everything would be so much harder and scarier and sadder and everything. But no, I was so excited to get my own place and decorate it and have everything in it that I wanted and the way I wanted it. There's definitely times where I'm like, I'd really like some company. But those times are much fewer and far between. The only thing I do miss is like having someone to like... (laughs) Take the boxes to the <laughs> to the trash. <laughs> Just someone that are like, oh, like it's so much easier. Like, cause you know, I remember like Tom would always do that kind of shit. I'm just like, oh, that's so nice. I don't have to like go to the trash. It's my job here. I gotta do it all, but it's fine. I'm independent woman. I can handle it. But yeah, I know sometimes it would be nice to have a little bit of help. But yeah, I that's I don't. I spend less time worrying about that. Yeah. Than I thought I would. <laughs> well, you're killing it. I'm excited for the new season. When did your podcast come out? What days? It's um every Wednesday. It's called Disrespectfully. It's going to be linked down below. Go check it out. Make sure to subscribe and get psyched for the new season. Katie, thanks for coming. Thank you. Lightweights out. Sick. That was great.